Donna Beneviento. She's a ghost. So reads the base concept for Donna, one of the four lords of the village, and the topic of today's lore dive in Resident Evil Village. The aristocratic Beneviento family have called the village home for generations. Like the houses of the other three lords, Beneviento had ancient blood ties to one of the four original lords of the land, in the case Berengario. The lore vaguely accused that Berengario, like the other ancestral lords, was a mutant of some type, but never ventures into the nature of this mutation or how it stood out from an average person. It is unclear if this genetic evolution persisted or not through time to the recent era of the last century. Donna Beneviento, noble by right of birth to this family, lived in the village during the 1900s. Speaking of the murky nature of the ancient lords, it is also uncertain if the four families had maintained their status as a ruling class through the centuries, or if it slowly become something more akin to the current monarchy in Europe, respected but holding no sway in governing matters. For Donna Beneviento, it seems more so that the latter is true, and perhaps the only family to hang on to such status was in fact House Dimitrescu. Regardless of this particular matter, the Benevento family were well off in their picturesque mansion near the waterfall. However, what's lovely on the outside isn't always the same on the inside. Once Mother Miranda came into the picture, the outlook for this quiet, mountainside village became bleak. So too was the future of the Benevento family. The first half of the 20th century saw the world ravaged by disasters both natural and man-made. Disease and conflict spread across a land like fire, and the European fronts of both world wars left the continent battered. Mother Miranda began planting the seeds of her plot during the latter of these horrible years, and in the 1950s, she eventually laid her twisted gaze on the Beneviento family. Now, the English localization of Resident Evil Village doesn't quite cover the Benevientos in as much detail as the original, Japanese version. While the localization glosses over her past, the original transcript pieces together the few scraps that are left in such as the note in Miranda's experiments regarding a Bernadette D, who, it turns out, was Donna's sister. Bernadette lost her life in the Cadeau implementation Miranda performed on her, and threw her family into dismay. Soon after, Donna's parents, in all their sorrow, took their own lives. Truly, this was a traumatizing experience for the young woman, and left a lasting mark on her psyche that she unfortunately could not overcome. From notes left by the family's gardener, we can see this ourselves. The gardener's note reads as follows. November 10th. Mistress Donna is now Mother Miranda's adopted daughter. In all my years, I've never been this overjoyed. Ever since childhood, she has always feared others, due to the scar across her face. After her parents' death, she locked herself away and would only talk to Angie, the doll her father made her. I am forever thankful to Mother Miranda's infinite compassion. November 27th. Mistress Donna seems happy. It might be my imagination, but I feel like her doll Angie is even more lively than before. She came to me in the garden today and used Angie to talk to me. We had a mighty fine conversation. Something about receiving a gift of power from Mother. November 29th. Mistress Donna gave me yellow flowers and told me to plant them in the garden. I planted them in front of Miss Claudia's grave. I don't know if it was a scent of the flowers, but I felt lightheaded. Then, like a dream, I saw my departed wife. I mentioned this to Donna and she seemed thrilled by it. She told me to go to the house tomorrow and see her. She said I could see my family once more. I'm not sure what she meant by that, but she's so kind. End of excerpt. These notes would seem to paint Donna more as tragic and naive, more so than, say, selfish and evil like Lady Dimitrescu. That is, of course, until you realize she was building retractable blades into her dolls. Her mental problems that emerged after the deaths of her family kept her from the outside world and focused on her doll making, a talent and skill set left her by her father that was unquestionably tied to the doll Angie which she had made for her. She focused on this for many of her years, and due to her ever-present and increasing anxiety, would have to communicate with others through ventriloquism with Angie, as opposed to speaking directly to them. As the years went by, Miranda eventually approached Donna too for her experiments. The prophet of the Black God recognized the significance of the four families' heritage, and seemed intent on having the heir of Beneviento on her council. Fortunately, or unfortunately depending on how you choose to look at it, Donna survived the implantation process. However, her ongoing and increasingly psychological problems resulted in Miranda dubbing her as a failure, with regard to her being a suitable host for her daughter. Aside from these problems and aforementioned scar, Donna was now left with a lesion covered with tiny tentacles on her right eye, part of the cadeau no doubt, and from what we can tell thereafter, hid her face beyond a black veil. I suppose you don't need to show your face when your doll is doing all the talking. Donna was unique among the lords in that she chose to break her cadeau into pieces and implant each into one of her dolls. This led her to be able to control them all like marionettes from a distance. This splitting of the cadeau could also be potentially why we don't see this woman undergo any further grotesque mutation during the game. She may very well be unable due to the separation of power. Speaking of power, another ability Don developed thanks to the cadeau was the power to induce hallucinations in those who had breathed in the pollen of a specific mold altered flower, the yellow ones mentioned in the gardener's notes. 
Her body produces a pheromone that grants her control over these particular plants, and as an extension, the hallucinogenic properties they contain. This is probably the more interesting of the two developments, as it gives credit to the idea that the majority of Ethan's later experience in the family home is almost entirely a hallucination, especially the fetus in the basement. Was that a shiver I just felt? Speaking of chills, Donna was a ghost indeed. Much of Ethan's experience with Donna was him chasing phantoms, like tales of possession in the supernatural and folklore. Between the mental manipulation and puppeteering of dolls while hidden by illusion, one might forgive Ethan if he believed he was up against a malevolent spirit. However, at the end of it all, it appears she may have never been far away. As Ethan stabbed away what he thought was a twisted doll Angie, the hallucination breaks, and Donna's life fades away due to its unknowing hands. His mind free, Ethan finds himself looking down at the lifeless woman with blade in hand. The confusion Ethan felt at that point must have been overwhelming. Although her powers were unique and interesting, they were not enough to stop Ethan's quest to save his daughter. Speaking of interesting things, although it never saw the light of day, one of the early builds of Resident Evil 4 revolved around hallucinations much like this trek into the Beneviento estate. Codenamed Hallucination, this build of Resident Evil 4 featured Leon S. Kennedy in a castle setting, which happens to be the name of another previous scrap build, and sees him infected with a new virus that causes him to hallucinate. The monsters, such as animated dolls, only existed in Leon's mind, and he seemingly could not harm them, which only added to the horror factor. Clearly, the developers still had a few of those ideas in the back of their minds years later as the scenario now lives in Resident Evil 8. Also, although only truly related by nature of also being a flower, Resident Evil 5 featured perhaps the most important plant in the entire franchise. Son Entrepe, or Stairway of the Sun, in the Resident Evil universe, was a plant native to West Africa, in which was discovered the progenitor virus. The very virus Oswald Spencer used to develop the T-Virus and other pathogens through Umbrella Corporation. One thing great about both Resident Evil Village and gaming in general now is our increased availability to look behind the scenes of development. It's truly interesting to see earlier scrapped ideas come back in the series and take a look under the hood, so to speak. But now that I explained all that, what do you think of Donna Beneviento and her lovely, lovely doll Angie? As the heaviest horror element in the game, do you want to see more scenarios like this in the future? Let me know, and I'll see you all soon. Cheers!